Hey, real quick, just pour some out for whoever started Cam Akers last night. You know, start the season off with a fat L, but we're here to make sure that we take only dubs going forward. The easiest way to do that is by going to prize picks because they have Tom Brady at 0.5 passing yards for week one. They want to get you on their platform. This is the way to do it, to give you a fucking free win. So go to prize picks, download the app. It's the first link in the description down below. And what's going to happen is you're going to use promo code BDGE when you get on prize picks, and they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match. Anything you put down up to $100, they're going to match. 10 turns into 20, 40 turns into 80. And then you could throw it down on Tom Brady, 0.5 passing yards. And if you followed me yesterday, we would have hit acres under 60 and a half total yards but the brady is a free fucking square you ain't gonna get a better deal in the fantasy sports gambling dfs whatever fucking industry ever ever again tom brady 0.5 passing yards on prize picks promo code bge when you hit the app today we're talking about some must starts and must sits at each position for the week this is going to be nice and quick some guys that you might be having some uh questions about whether or not you should get them to your lineup in week one i'm going to try to stay more onto the fringe dudes you know maybe for each position i'll do one that's kind of obvious but i need to push you over the edge and then some not so obvious ones as we move down the list <laughs> For the must-starts of the week, what we're going to do is do like a streamer at quarterback, a streamer at tight end, and then get into the, the skill position on players. So starting at the QB position, the streamer of the week is Mr. Jameis Winston. Saints quarterback playing against the Falcons, man. They always tear us up through the air. It's going to be dump-offs to Alvin Kamara. Our defense is just, listen, we've had some some bright patches over the last year or so with our defense. We've looked good at some parts. We look bad at other parts. We're, we're, for the majority, we're just a shit defense, okay? We're not we're not good. And this is a, a much improved offense. Winston's under center, obviously. We have Michael Thomas. We have Chris Olave. We have Jarvis Landry. We have Alvin Kamara. It's just a good team. And I think they're going to eat us up through the air. So Jameis Winston, I love as a dude who'll probably score two touchdowns, put a little bit of legwork in. You know, he's obviously coming off the ACL tear, but he's a generally mobile quarterback. So I think he'll be okay on the ground and like a point or two fantasy point wise for you in that regard. But I think he throws for two touchdowns. I think he throws for 280 yards or, or something like that in that range. So I think he's a very, very viable streaming option for you in week one. When we get to the running backs, I talked about uh, Elijah Mitchell yesterday, and I have moved him further and further up our rankings. I think he's like RB15 now. He jumped Zeke and David Montgomery. For me, Elijah Mitchell is fully healthy. He's ready to go. He's not even on the injury report, and they're playing against the Bears. So one, this is a game script that they should dominate. This is a game script that they should keep control of and want to keep the ball on the ground. It's Trey Lance. They're going to ease him into having a big workload with his arm, so I think they're going to rely on their running backs a lot, and Elijah Mitchell is the guy there. The Chicago Bears defense is not what it used to be. A key mix is gone. He's in Tampa Bay now, so the middle of that defensive line is one that they're going to be able to run all over. So I like Elijah Mitchell a lot. He has to be in your lineup. We're also taking the over on him for rushing yards on prize picks. That's another one to absolutely nail. And if you're going a little bit further down the lineups, I like Naeem Hines a lot as well. I think Indy will also control this game, which means Jonathan Taylor should see, you know, 20 plus carries. But I also think that means like in the fourth quarter, we might see some full drives where Naeem, Naeem Hines gets the whole thing, right? In two minutes and four minute drills, we know he's getting that. He already gets a lot of red zone work just because that's his role in the offense. But I think we'll see him get, you know, six to eight plays in a row just by himself because they'll be controlling the game so well. So if you're looking for a flex play with some upside, I really like Naeem Hines this week. Moving over to the wide receiver position. I'm on Ross St. Brown is a is a is a no-brainer for me. I think he picks up exactly where they left off. Going against Philadelphia, I think Philly's gonna move the ball really well. I think they're gonna score a lot of points and it's gonna force Jared Goff to throw the ball a lot. So I think I'm on Roth is going to connect right back with Goff like he did at the end of last season. I think we're gonna see a very, very big game out of Amon Ra, St. Brown immediately. All right. We move more to the flex area, the flex position. The Jacksonville Jaguars are playing at Washington. Okay, this might be a little bit of a slower pace game, but I do think James Robinson's not at full health. They won't be depending on the ground game and the running backs to win this one for them. I think they're going to air it out a bit. Christian Kirk gets a wonderful matchup against this dude named Benjamin St. Juiced. He's a second year player, and he was a bottom three in the entire NFL in fantasy points allowed per route run last year. So I love 
the idea of Christian Kirk kind of moving around and him getting a ton of targets with Trevor Lawrence in their first game together, coming off this big bag catch that he that he caught in the summer. So really like Christian Kirk. Also really like Marquez Valdez Scantling. This should be a game where the over under is really, really high in the Chiefs and Arizona Cardinals game. Everyone wants to bet on Juju. Ever we have a clear running back committee, we have a clear wide receiver committee, and everybody just likes to anoint these guys as as the guys. I just don't think it's that clear. So I would rather bet on a dude that you're getting a better value that makes more big plays down the field that matches up with Mahomes' strength, which is his arm, obviously. I really like what we saw with them two together in the preseason. Mahomes and MVS, they were a match. They are a fucking match, and I think they're going to start a fucking fire with that match. In week one, I think MVS has a nice week one that you can throw into your flex spot and feel pretty good at the end of the week. Now, my streamer of the week at tight end. Animal's going to love this one. Might be out of nowhere. Austin Hooper, Tennessee Titans versus the New York Giants. This is a team that you could throw the ball against. They have a very good run D, so Derrick Henry's going to get fed and fed and fed, but I think eventually they're going to have to throw the ball. A.J. Brown's not there anymore. Traylon Burks is like, I don't know, the wide receiver 2, 3, 4 on the fucking depth chart right now. Robert Woods coming back from an ace. Point, case in point, they don't have a lot of weapons right now, and Austin Hooper is going to be their red zone guy, so I wouldn't be surprised if Austin Hooper goes, you know, 4 for 40 and a touchdown. I think he's a decent streaming option if you got nowhere else to look. So moving on to our sits of the week at QB, it's just Justin Fields, man. I just, there's no chance I put him into my lineup until I see what this Bears offense is going to look like. And I already think I know it's going to be bad. The San Francisco 49ers defense is going to put a lot of pressure on this kid. They're going to live in the backfield, which is probably going to result in interceptions and strip sacks and all that kind of shit. So maybe it results in a few big run plays, but I don't see a lot of success happening through the air in this one. So Fields is a dude that there's no way I'm getting him into my lineup. Two running backs, Brees Hall, Cordero Patterson. Brees Hall is clearly going to be in a committee with Michael Carter. Brees Hall is also playing behind Joe Flacco, who's not one to open up fucking defenses for running backs. He's also without Mekhi Becton and his replacement, Dwayne Brown, is not going to be playing week one either. The offensive line's turning into a, a bit of a tragedy at this point. The entire Jets offense, bit of a tragedy at this point against the Baltimore Ravens. That's not a defense that you're excited to get your dudes into the lineup against. So Brees Hall's a dude that I am going to wait and see on him. I think, again, in a month, you're going to love playing him. You're going to love that you have him, but you're not going to love it right now. Same thing with Cordero Patterson, man. I, As a Falcons fan, I, we, I just watched what happened towards the end of last year. They clearly don't want to use him in the role that is best for fantasy players. It's going to be Pitts and it's going to be Drake London in the passing game. Cordell's going to play wide receiver. He's not going to play much at running back. I also like the under 10 rushing attempts for Cordero Patterson on prize picks. I think he'll end up right around there, but I think he'll be lower. I think they want to use Damian Williams. I think they want to use a little bit of Tyler Algier. I think they want to use their running backs to run the ball, and they don't want Cordero Patterson to be that guy. Um, so I don't think he's going to be like super involved in this offense. He's one of the better playmakers they have. They just, for whatever reason, don't want him to be that guy. So a couple other dudes I have uh, ranked a lot lower than like ECR consensus. Two injury things to keep an eye on. Deontay Johnson, Alan Lazar, they both miss practice time. Deontay Johnson still dealing with a shoulder, a uh, sore shoulder from the preseason injury. That that could become a problem. He might miss week one. If that's the case, and you know, I'm probably firing up George Pickens. I guess I could put Jace Claypool as a flex play as well. But Deontay Johnson, even if he does play, he's probably going to be limited. So I would probably move him pretty far down the rankings. And then I have uh, Elijah Moore, eight spots below ECR against the Ravens with Joe Flacco. I know everyone loves to be like, he had this big game with Joe Flacco. I, these sample sizes are so small that I'm not going to be like, yes, the Joe Flacco is is the unlock to this dude. I think Elijah, uh, Elijah Moore is awesome, and I think he's playable, but I have him at wide receiver 39, where his consensus is wide receiver 31. So I might want to wait and see, right? They're playing against Baltimore. He's got a banged up O-line. He's got Joe Flacco. Like, I, this is not someone I'm really excited to get into my lineup E immediately. Same thing with Amari Cooper. I have him eight spots below ECR. Uh, Cleveland, it's Jacoby Brissett. Carolina is a very underrated defense, a very underrated roster as well. So he's someone that I'm not overly excited to get into my lineup unless they have a good matchup, unless they have a game script that they should dominate in. And I just don't know if we're going to see that. with. Cle I think it's going to be a slow pace game, a lot of handoffs, not a lot of plays run. Not a lot of points scored. So I'm kind of staying away from that game outside of like the really obvious plays in like C-Mac, DJ Moore, Nick Chubb. Outside of that, there's no one like glaringly obvious at the tight end position. I mean, keep an eye on Zach Ertz's injury status. Same thing with George Kittle. Looks like he's going to miss a week uh, with his groin strain. I got Albert O a couple spots below ECR, but I don't really think most people are starting Albert, Albert O. If you're trying to get cute, I would probably stay away from that one as well. But that's going to wrap up this video. I just wanted to get some dudes that I think were like on the fringe that I've been getting a lot of sit-start questions about. Again, my rankings are available 
Just go to bdge.co and you'll be able to sign up for the Big Dog subscription, which will get you access to our weekly rankings as well as a live stream, a private live stream every single Saturday. We call it our Q and Assault, where you can hit me with any sit start questions that you have for about a half hour at a time. You can only get access to that through the membership. But most importantly, what you got to do is go hit that Brady Free Square on Prize Picks, all right? Prizepicks.com or download the app and use promo code BDGE when you deposit for the first time to get that hundo percent deposit match. I love y'all. Good luck in your games this weekend, and I'll see you in the Q and Assault tomorrow.